we're going to um, begin the study of the book of Proverbs. At the retreat, our theme, like I had said yesterday, was Wisdom Wells. It was Wisdom Wells, and we looked at the subject matter of wisdom, and we looked at what wells signify. And that was when the Lord laid it in my heart, because personally, I studied the book of Proverbs once a year. So, and we did study Proverbs last year. It made sense that on the call again, we should start and study the book of Proverbs. So today we're going to begin with Proverbs chapter one. But before we go into the book proper, I'd like to share with you um, something that I said at the retreat. I said that wisdom is about the future. Wisdom is about the future. Wisdom is never about the past. So when God begins to speak about wisdom, you need to know that God is talking about the future. You need to know that he's talking about the future. So in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 talks mainly about why we ought to pay attention to wisdom. That's what it talks about. He says, let me read. Um, I may not be able to read all of it because we did this last year. Um, so if you still have your notes, this is a refresher for you. But the reason why the book of Proverbs is important for you to study at least once a year is because the book of Proverbs holds... Um, Wisdom, let me use the word wisdoms, or we hold um, templates. The book of Proverbs is a book of templates for how to live your life on a daily basis. It talks about family, it talks about money, it talks about relationships, it talks about health, it talks about how you should eat, it talks about your work, it talks about everything. The book of Proverbs talks about everything that makes your day-to-day -day living. If Exodus and Leviticus talk to you, talk to you about how to walk with God. You know, Exodus talks about how to go from what your journey, journey with God. You know, the journey of your life with God, the things to look out for. And then what's the other one called? Um, Leviticus talks to us about the way to worship God, the mode of worship, how we ought to worship God. Proverbs talks about how you should live your life every single day. And if you could understand it, the tendency is there are many things you fall into that you will not fall into, number one. And there are many, many, many more things that you, the Lord will do for you that will just be easy because you are aligned. You will pray less if you just followed the book of Proverbs. So we're going to look at it. It's been reputed. I said that Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. And I'm not surprised because even the Bible says it was one of the wisest he was the wisest king that lived. He was so wise that the queen of Sheba and all the leaders came to sit at his feet to glean from his wisdom. So verse number one, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Can you see it? If you followed the book of Proverbs, these are some of the things you would see. You would know wisdom. You would, you would know instruction. You will perceive the words of understanding. You would receive instruction of wisdom. You would know and understand justice. You would understand judgment. You would know how to walk in equity. It would make the simple wise. It will bring a young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. 
to understand the proverb and the interpretation. That is, you would hear people who speak in unclear speech, speech if you like, and you will understand it if you pay attention to the book of Proverbs. It says you would even understand the interpretation of the words of the wise and their dark sayings. If you go with the book of Proverbs, if you understand this Proverbs, you, the fear of the Lord will come upon you because it will become the beginning of knowledge for you. It says, but it's fools that despise wisdom and instruction. So in verse 8, it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, chains about, their, about your, thy neck. If you would embrace the wisdom that we will find in the book of Proverbs, you will be like someone who's, who was dressed um like a royal with something on your head, like an ornament. There will be something that makes you stand apart. Someone asked me, uh, I think yesterday, or the, they said, how did you become this wise? <laughs> and I said, it's a function of many hard knocks. But you see, you don't have to take all the hard knocks to be wise. If I had known what I know now, I would have read the book of Proverbs, like once every month, rather than all the hard knocks. Your learning does not need to be hard. The book of Proverbs ensures that. So yes, the school of hard, hard knocks is good, though, because you'll be wise if you're paying attention. But the easier route is to hear what the word of God says in the book of Proverbs. The sentence says, my son, if sin has enticed thee, Consent thou not. The question is, as old as I am, how can sinners entice me? At the retreat, I was telling them that it's very blurry and very thin line sometimes. There was something I wanted to do. And someone said to me, oh, there's this way to do it that is neither stressful nor costly. And... You know, you, for, for the life of me, it didn't occur to me that it was illegal. I had actually gotten on the phone and started to make arrangements to do it. I was talking to my daughter, and when I finished telling her what, you know, should be done, because if it had occurred to me where the person was telling me that it was wrong, my style is to say to the person, that was wrong. But I just said, okay, oh, thank God for, for children who have been schooled and tutored to speak up. I picked up the phone to share with my daughter. I said, okay, this is what you should do and what you do and what you do. And she listened to me and she said, mommy, are you asking me to lie? This was not 10 years ago. This was last week. She said, mommy, are you asking me to lie? That was when it dawned on me that what I was proposing was wrong because it didn't seem wrong to me for a split second. And it registered as something we could do, especially because it could save us money. So she said to me, Mom, do you want me to, are you asking me to lie? That was her point blank question. When she said it, I quickly caught the call because I was... I was horrified that I would even suggest something like that to my child. The next morning, I had barely spoken two sentences out of it to my husband. My husband said, no, we are not going to do that. It's very easy for sinners to entice you. They don't bring the thing and call it, this is sin. But you get in trouble with God. So this, uh, he said, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. And if they come, if they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lock privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and hold 
as those that go down into the pit, that you should say no. We shall find us precious substance. The thing about these kinds of conversations, where they check you out of what you believe or who you are in God, is that it promises, it always comes with a promise. There's always a reward if you do. There's always a reward if you do. There is always a reward if you do. If they say, cast in in thy lot among us, let us have one pause. It says, don't even go into partnership with those you clearly know as sinners already. I know someone will say to you, thou shalt not judge. I did not judge. The Bible says that the soul that sinned shall die. If you do business, for instance, and your business is illegal, and you ask me to come and invest in it, simply because the uh, profit is a thousand multiplied a thousand, is the investment multiplied a thousand times. I don't need to pray to know that I shouldn't cast in my lot with you. I shouldn't add my money to your money. It's not judgment, it's just facts. Some of us got into business transactions with people we already knew were of questionable character. They presented business ideas to us. We bought in. And yet we say, oh no, I just gave them money. I, don't, I did not do the business with them. If your money enabled them to do the business, you are part of them. You are part of them. Some people will say, oh, I wasn't the one that kidnapped to. I just forwarded, I just provide, um, supplied food. That you knew that it was a den of kidnappers. And you supply food because they pay you heftily. And you did not say anything. You have become one of them. When he says, do not cast, uh, have one pause with them. When as a civil servant, someone says to you, um, or you are a contractor and a civil servant says to you that you should pad the contract and then give them um, a, um, the padded part of it simply because they were the ones that brought the bid to you. And you, you um, what's the word, you... Oh, Jesus, help me. And you think that that was okay simply because, well, when you get the contract, you will still execute it properly. You have aided and abetted stealing. So, therefore, I'm not the one that said it. It's the book of Proverbs. You are a thief. My son, walk not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from thy path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. We all complain about Nigeria. I keep saying, is it your governor that threw those pure water wrapper in the gutter in front of your house? When you think that it's only the government that are wicked, you, what are you? You are wicked. Because you know that when those... um, um, the, when those politics, when they accumulate, they block the drainage and the neighborhood become flooded. And then you will begin to complain that we do not have government. Mommy, is it government that threw the pure water wrapper in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in this thing? No, it's not them. We are the ones that throw trash rather than pay 1000 naira or whatever monthly, you know, to, to, to dispose of, 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 of trash. We throw them at night. We go and throw them in the gutter. And then you are complaining about government. You are the real terrorists that we have. Just know it now. Yes, you go to some neighborhoods. Their roads have been dug up. Is it government that came and dug the road? Do not walk with them. Young men will get up and dig roads because dig ditches and roads because they want people to slow down because they want to ask for money. I've heard stories of community leaders who companies, because they have factories in their community, decide to uh, tar the road and grade it and tie it and make it motorable. And community leaders will say, unless they get a bribe, they will not let the people tar their community, the, the road that leads to their community. After they will say government is wicked, you are the real wicked person. If you can allow your community to suffer because you want 10 million, 20 million, look at you then now. 
Can you see it? It says their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. It says surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay in they lay wait for their own blood. The Bible says if you behave like these things I have been, these people I have been describing. It says, look at it, verse 17 and 18. He says, you are setting the trap for yourself. You may think, oh, 20 million, I made 20 million because someone told, gave you the, took another person's bid and canceled your, their names out of them and, and you copied another man's bid. You are not even an engineer. You are bidding for an engineering project. You take the money, sub standard, whatever, is what you do. Let me not say something that you say I cost you this money. But my brother and my sister, Proverbs say you should stop. I'm not the one that said it, stop. It says because everything we do and we do, we think we do against others, we do against ourselves. Somebody will ask, why are we even having this conversation in the body of Christ? Oh, sue me, no. I don't know why. But that is the conversation we have daily, every day, every day, every day, rather than when we gather as children of God to determine what else can we do to glorify glorify God and to put him on display. We are here correcting, begging each other not to take bribe and give bribes. Can you see it? The book of Proverbs, this, I know somebody is saying, I will not attend prayer call this December. She's coming. Uh, well, the Bible says wisdom crieth without. This is verse 20. She offered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates and in the city she authored her words. How long, ye simple words, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refuse, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. It says, okay, let's assume you didn't know. So you need to pay attention in the next one month because it's 31 um, 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 chapters of Proverbs and I will do my best to do one chapter a day. It might not be great justice, but I will try. It says if you don't know, if you will just open the Bible and you will read it, you will not be making the mistakes you are making right now. I told you that I it didn't occur to me, but the reason why my daughter could alert me to that fact immediately was because we had taught her before. I'm sure I'm the one that taught her. Uh, I was one of the people that taught her but I got in that blurry line and you know that space and the line was blurry and I did not recognize it but thank God she spoke up it says if you would op be open to counsel and you will be open to reproof you are likely to be a wise person before God you need to pay attention he says, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comment. He says, you may think that you are acting very shrewdly right now. You may think that you are cutting corners and it's because you are smart that you are getting away with you. Verse 26 says, a day is going to come. It says, your calamity will come. He says, then I will mock when your fear shows up. Because a day is going to come. A day is going to come. A day is going to come. Genera it may take a while, but you see, no evil deed goes unpunished. There is nothing. So no, stop. Stop. Some of us, our only, instru our only reason why we do these things is we say that other, everyone is doing it. The last time I checked, nobody christened you everyone. That's not the name your father gave you. So even if everyone is doing it, you are John, you are Peter, you are Andrew, you are Kemi, you are Kike, you are someone else. You are not everyone, so you ought not to join them. Verse 27 says, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, May this not be your portion. 
You need to pay attention. We need to pay attention. We need to stand. You know, it's, it, it, it feels really um, cumbersome and stressful when you live in a society where everything is done the wrong way. And you who's doing the right, going the right rat track is being told that you are a fool. By the time my, I, I, I readjusted what I wanted, my, what my daughters, my children could have done for free, but they would have liked to do, cost us about 500 pounds. That's a lot of money if you change it to Nigerian Naira. So sometimes doing the right thing will cost you. But you see, it's the only reason I can go to sleep when these children pursue that, that project further, because I know nothing can be broken, nothing can, the devil does not have anything. Jesus said the, thief, uh, the prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in me. When you put your hand to iniquity simply because you didn't pay attention to simple instructions and follow them, they will suffer. And sometimes you don't suffer. Your children suffer. May your children not suffer what does not concern them in the name of Jesus. Simply because the day we were teaching Proverbs, you dropped off. You said, ah, that one, she was very rude. So you dropped off. I'm not being rude. I'm just telling what's in the Bible. You hear? Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of God. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You will see it as we go on in the book of Proverbs. And the guy is saying, he said, look, when they call on me, I will not answer. And the simple reason I won't answer is because when I brought the knowledge to them, they did not pay attention. When I brought them wisdom, when I told them that we should walk in the fear of God, they said no. Walk in the fear of God, he will not kill you. And don't tell me it's possible to be to live a a, a, a correct um what a righteous life. Let me use those that expression. It's, it's difficult to live that kind of it's impossible to live it in Nigeria. Who told you? Who told you? Just means that you will not be lying, your bed will not be made up of other people's money. That's what it means. And yet there are people whose bed is made up with money and it's not other people's money. So don't say, hey, but I can't live a poverty stricken life. There are people who are wealthy on the face of Nigeria or in the face of or in this nation of Nigeria that did not steal a cover from anybody. They worked hard and the Lord blessed their work. Go work. Stop looking for short uh, uh, cuts. Stop looking for cut corners. Says they would none of my counsel. They despise my reproof. May you not despise the reproof of the word of God in this time that we're studying the book of Proverbs in Jesus' name. Therefore, it says they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. God forbid. Can you see it? It says prosperity. That's what all of us want to have now. Eh? I want to be so rich that I will borrow myself, you know, somebody, you know, I'll find the technology that somebody will go and bath me and bring me back and I will not get up from where I'm seated. If I don't want to eat, somebody will eat on my behalf. I want to be that rich. But he's saying that the prosperity of fools will destroy them. The prosperity of fools. If you foolishly gather wealth by getting involved in a business with unrighteousness, he says it will make you prosper. In the eyes of all of us, we will even be envying you, envying yourself. Even those of us who are the the most anointed, we will. Some days we will use it as the prayer point. You say, "Father, make me prosper like David." The only problem is David, not thief for night. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. He says, "But whoso vex thirty three acknet unto me shall dwell safely." and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. 
pay. He says, if you hearken unto me, you shall do it safely and you shall be quiet from the fear of evil. I want to say it one more time. This is the conclusion of the matter. This is where you must take a brand new notebook for the study of the book of, 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 uh, of Proverbs. He says, if you hearken to the things that we will start to look at from tomorrow, he says, you will dwell safely and you will be quiet from the fear of evil. What that means is when they begin to shout and say they are coming, you'll be like, I know take person something. They are not coming from me. When they say, ha, people are running this way, you say, I have no need to run. When they say, ah, police is at the gate, you say, let them come in. I did not steal anything from someone. You will not be jumping 20 meter or 20 feet high fence when they, you hear that EFCC is at the gate because you did not do anything. Someone will say, ah, but EFCC, they frame people. I don't think that if your hands are clean from beginning to the end, they may try, but I don't think that they will succeed when you call upon on the name of the Lord, because the Bible says he will deliver you. He will deliver you. Do you understand this money? See, I know go talk make on an old vex, so because some people have warned me in box that I should stop telling you people make on an old vex. So I know go talk to make you no vex today. What I will tell you say if you vex, when you vex finish, make you change. That's the conversation we are going to have. And no, I'm not judging you. You were not the one that almost that was suggesting to your children to lie last week. It was me. So I'm not judging you. I am just telling us that we need to see what the word of God says for everyday living. And it's found in the book of Proverbs. Everyday living. It will tell you how to do with your husband. It will tell you how to do with your wife. It will tell you how to treat your children. It will tell you how to treat your health. It will tell you everything. It, it even talks about exercise for those of me. Did I say those of us? No, those of me that will not pay attention to those instructions consistently. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So fasten your seat beds. We are in for a very interesting ride concern in, from the book of Proverbs. You will see things, you know, Proverbs, the thing I like about it is if you really follow Proverbs, then you will be able to make split-second decisions because it will be clear to you. And because Proverbs took everything about the Bible and just distilled them into one-liners. You will know what to do. We talk to you about how to, to treat your husband. Every single thing we talk to you about it, my brothers and my sisters, pay attention. The Lord wants to speak to us in the month of December. And I think that is a good way to end the year. So get ready for the year coming. Um, for those of us who have not heard me say it, 2021 is the year of opportunity. That's what the Lord said to me. But it's opportunity you must be ready for. Because if you're not ready, mm -hmm. and when I say ready, I'm, yes, some of us may need to get some certifications and stuff like that. But make sure you get certified in following the word of God first and foremost. So that we can get where we need to go. If you're on this prayer call and you've not given your life to Jesus, the book of Proverbs alone cannot help you. You need to be in Christ. It is only then that these words become life on the inside of you. So how about you pray with me this morning and say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Let's begin from there. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. If we start from there, if we start from there, then you can now embrace the study of the book of Proverbs with us so that you can get where you need to go. If you're saying, Lord Jesus, I give you my life, can you type it? Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. We want to pray along with you. We want to encourage you. We want to talk to God concerning you, that he will hold you by the hand, that you will not drop off from his sight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, who is this that wants to give his life to Jesus? The rest of you, what are you praying? I think that most of us should be repenting the way I was repenting from both sides of every, with every pore of my body. When my daughter said, mommy, do you want me to lie? Are you asking me to lie? Hey, God forbid. 
If I wanted to lie, I should just lie by myself so that the consequence will come upon me. But to get my, my own children involved, God forbid, to not be my portion. My brothers and my sisters, are you praying? Pray that the Lord will give you ears that are here in this next 30, 30 days. Pray that the Lord will give you ears that are here in this next 30 days. Because if you know me, when I teach the book of Proverbs, I bring it home. So I will be opening your pot of soup. I will be looking under your bed. The skeletons in your wardrobe will be coming out because the Holy Spirit will show them to me. But I need you to pray and say, Father, show me what I need to adjust so that my life will be better. That's what I'm praying for us this morning. That's what I'm praying for myself. Thank you for joining the prayer call. Remember, we will study the book of Exodus tomorrow. Exodus chapter 9 is where we go to. You know, I remember that I, we studied Exodus chapter 9. That, you know, um, the first uh, season, when uh, it was right in this same time, when um, then it was, they were doing the recounts for Hillary to see whether Trump truly beat her. Now we're doing the recount for Trump to see whether, uh, what's his name? Biden. Biden truly beat him. Well, no, in Hillary's time, they were waiting for the electoral votes to come, college votes to come in. The Lord wants to speak to America and by extension, he's going to speak to Nigeria again tomorrow in chapter 9 of the book of Proverbs. Please join me there. It will be at 7 p.m. The seven-day prayer begins today. Only Jesus can help me now, but I know he would help me. So seven-day prayer begins today. And I think that we are going to focus on the wisdom to recognize and take opportunities in 2021. That's part of what we'll be praying in this next seven days. I know the prayer call will be full because people want to pray for wisdom to take opportunities. If I had said, come and pray for Nigeria now, you will not show up. But God will have mercy on you. He will have mercy on you. So that's what we will be doing. We want to thank God for Artemis Adewusi Oladipo, who gave her life this morning. Father, hold her by the hand, O oh God. Father, teach her of, her of yourself. Father, let her spirit be light to receive your word. Father, surround her with the right set of people so that she would not fall into error. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bring her to the church where you want her to be tutored and discipled. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, raise a woman and a man over her life that will bring her to truth in the name of Jesus. We also pray, dear God, concerning Chinas Enyene, in the name of Jesus, as these people give their lives, oh God, Father, greater would they be in the name of Jesus. They will not fall by the wayside in the name of Jesus. Father, they will know you for themselves in the name of Jesus. And whatever their peculiar situation may be today, Lord, you will help them. In the name of Jesus, you will help them. In the name of Jesus, you will help them. In the name of Jesus, you will help them. Amen. Father Lord, we worship you. Ah, Etel too. Please don't drop off. Let's be praying for this one. Etel Asogwa gave her life as well. Father, we are grateful. Selim Ahandali. Lord, we bring your children before you. We rejoice that they give their life today. Father, write their name in the book of life. Lord, teach them of yourself. Let their peace be great, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Breathe upon them for good this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we rejoice with them because we know that heaven rejoices over them today. Thank you, Lord. 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 We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. So come tomorrow. Let's see what God will say to us out of Proverbs chapter 2. This will be interesting if you read ahead. So please read ahead and come. God bless you and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.